Hi, it's Dwyer. It's July 27th, 2024. Let's talk about Derek Chisora beating Joe Joyce. I was wrong on that fight. I was, I was expecting a different fight. In my opinion, Joe Joyce left that fight on the table. Let's discuss it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion for, from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, you know, I like to look at fights and look at history. This fight, as odd as this will sound, has a lot in common with the Rumble in the Jungle, Ali Foreman, right? You had an older guy who people thought was a little bit past his prime, right? In fact, thought he had one foot or should have had one foot firmly planted in retirement, and that's Derek Chisora. You have an opponent who really should have too much for him, right? Joe Joyce has an excellent jab. He doesn't use it enough in this fight. He has an excellent jab, just like Foreman. His hand speed's a little on the slow side, just like Foreman, right? The difference between the two guys is Joe Joyce is really defensively challenged. Um, Foreman, of course actually had an Archie Moore defense, and when he wanted, could actually be pretty adept defensively. But let me just say, just like Ali in 74, Derek Chisora goes over to the ropes. Right now, understand, both Ali and Derek Chisora are facing bigger men than them. Bigger men with jabs. Right now, I've said here before, all Foreman had to do to win that fight, and Foreman was the champ going in. Foreman was favored just like Joe Joyce was favored. Right, All Foreman had to do when Ali goes over to the ropes is to pace himself, shoot a jab, stay away from Ali, not be close enough to get hit with counters, and then back away on occasion. Let the underdog understand, look, player, I don't have a reason to follow you over to the ropes. You have to engage with me here, right? Understand, Joe Joyce, and the scoring could have gone either way, quite frankly, right? There's no reason in the ninth round, which Joe Joyce has won, Right, that Joe Joyce is following Derek Chisora over to the ropes. Right, player, you've already won the round 10-9. It's a 10-round fight. You then have the 10th round. What are you doing being close enough to Derek Chisora for Derek Chisora to get the knockdown? I mean, folks, it's ridiculous. You know, fighters need to understand. Uh, Big Baby had this problem in his last fight. They need to understand that they don't have to go for the knockout. Right? They can trust their tools. Why is Derek Chisora able to land these counter right hands repeatedly on Joe Joyce? A guy with an excellent jab. I didn't get it. Isn't this the guy who jabbed Dubois to death? Right? Why didn't why didn't Joyce give up on landing power shots? He has a jab, folks. A jab is a space maker. He has a jab. He has an old man. Great performance by Chisora. But understand, Chisora's 40. He's an old man. He's over by the ropes. Why isn't Joyce just jabbing him? Why does Joyce have to take the extra step to be in counterpunching range? It made no sense. Right? You understand, just like you understood in the Rumble in the Jungle, that Ali, over by the ropes, needed Foreman to go over by the ropes. Here you understood Derek Chisora in rounds 9 and 10. 
needed Joyce to go over to the ropes and to then start trading big shots with him. Since Chisora's right hand, and folks, that counter right is lethal the whole fight. Right early, Chisora's throwing counter lefts. But then he realizes, hell, I'm a right-handed fighter. Why don't I just throw my counter dominant hand? Right now, understand that counter is coming on the same side as Joe Joyce's jab. Why didn't Joe Joyce start faking the jab? throwing off the tempo, not allow Derek Chisora to time him. Right, so I thought, I thought Joe Joyce, who starts the fight, well, understand, Joe Joyce is backing up Derek Chisora. Chisora is on the ropes out of necessity, just like Ali was. Right, Chisora is on the ropes out of necessity. Right? Why are you trading big shots with him? Understand, I believe it's Usyk claims that the hardest heavyweight puncher he's faced is Derek Chisora. Right? Insiders know Chisora has a punch. Why are you allowing Chisora to throw his A game at you? To throw his A level punch at you? when you have a jab, right? Understand, you know, Foreman had one of the best jabs I've seen, right? One wonders why he's throwing hooks at all against Ali. What is Joe Joyce doing here? Throwing power shots against Derek Chisora. You don't need the knockout to win the fight. Right, the fight's at the 0-2. Hey, you know what? That's Joe Joyce's home country too. Right, you're fighting an old man. He backs up. You have a great jab. You have the height advantage. Right, why isn't Joe Joyce just winning slow rounds? First off, why isn't Joe Joyce trying to create slow rounds? You have a great jab, folks. This is the shootout at 0-2. The bullets start flying from the first round. Right? You're, you're looking at this fight and you're like, man, are these guys ever going to take their foot off the gas? Right? Both guys are late 30s, early 40s. Right? If you have a great jab, what's wrong with slowing down the fight? What's wrong with hitting Chisora with the jab keeping a distance, having Chisora understand, if I go try to hide over by the ropes, this guy's just going to look at me. I'm going to have to take chances to get inside on this guy. Here, all Derek had to do was wait for Joe Joyce to come over. Right, let me say too that fighters really need to know their limitations. Great defensive fighters and... <laughs> Neither guy here was great defensively, right? Great defensive fighters feel punches coming back. They understand the sequence, right? I throw a jab. If it's a lazy jab and I pull it back and I'm lazy, the other guy might counter it, right? Isn't that the thought process? Aren't you in there thinking about what could be coming back? Aren't you thinking about the fact that sometimes you need to double, triple, up on the jab. Just to let the other guy know, player, there's no counter-punching opportunity with your right hand. Somebody in the comment section of this video tell me what Joe Joyce is doing. Derek Chisora's head-hunting him. Right? Derek's not throwing chest shots. Derek's not hitting him on the arm. No, Derek Chisora is waiting for him then he's throwing counters to the head. Right? You just saw 10 rounds of that fight. What adjustment did Joe Joyce make? You know, I understand in a fight, you don't really know the other guy. Maybe in round two, the angle's not what you thought. You get hit in the head with the right hand. You say, okay, okay, you know, this guy has a good counter right hand. 
Don't you figure out the angles by round nine? So I want people to revisit that knockdown in round nine. Joe Joyce is clearly winning that round. It's a close fight. It's a 10-round fight. All Joe has to do to win that ninth round at that point is to stick a jab a few times. Take a step back. Lord knows the two fighters gave us so much action up to that point. Who's going to boo Joe for taking a step back? Taking his foot off the gas. The guy's been driving 75 the whole fight. Instead, Joe Joyce keeps coming forward. Derek Chisora knows he's going to be over here in the corner. Derek Chisora knows I'm going to have an opportunity to throw a right counter. It has a good chance of landing because it seemed like most of Derek's right hand counters were landing. Right, so I, I just thought it was ridiculous. You know, let me also say too, that knockdown, I know Joe gets up, I know on the telecast they say, oh, Joe can continue and stuff like that. Folks, uh, in a fight like this, fighters need awareness. Both guys needed to understand. This fight is close. I can't afford to get knocked down. If you're Joe Joyce and you're winning the ninth round, why don't you just have that in your win column? What's wrong with going into the tenth round having won the ninth round? Why is Joe going for the stoppage? Especially when Derek Chisora was extremely successful in landing counters up until that point. In other words, it's not like the shot that drops Joe in the ninth is the first hard counter that hit him. Right? No, no, no. Derek Chisora has been landing shots. Right? Lands a lot of good lefts early in the fight. Then starts feasting on that right hand. If you know you're defensively challenged, why do you want the shootout to continue into the later rounds when you have the kind of jab that stopped Daniel Dubois. Right, what Joe should have done was, you know, wave that Derek. Right, he's winning the ninth round. It's a close fight. He has a jab. He should have looked at Derek. Just waved that in. Right, isn't that what Pernell Whitaker did to Julio Cesar Chavez? Right, let the guy know, hey, player, look, you know, you're going to have to come over here for us to engage. Right, I'm not going to be foolish enough being the bigger man here. Right, to give you an opportunity to counter me up top. Right, also, Joe should have known, look, I, I'm not great defensively. I didn't get it. I, You know, understand, too, I would have preferred Joe to pump a jab, be away from him. If Joe's not going to pump a jab, what's wrong with parking his left hand up on the side of his face? Right? If he wants to go in kamikaze for some odd reason and try to get a knockout, in a fight, by the way, that he's favored to win. Right? If he, if he wanted to go in kamikaze, shouldn't he have gone in and had a Chisora's right-handed. Shouldn't he have gone in and, and have his right just pinned to the side of his head? He doesn't even do that. Right? Didn't Mike Tyson, when he came inside, didn't he have a hand up? Right? What's, what's Joe Joyce doing? It's as if Joe was completely unaware as late as the ninth round that Jarek Chisora was landing great counters. Then, of course, we get the 10th round. You know, fighters need to be aware of momentum, right? The fight's still close. The fight's still close. I believe if Joe wins either the 9th or 10th, an argument can be made he's won the fight. Of course, Joe decides to take that off the table by getting knocked down in the 9th round. Then in the 10th round, he again follows Derek over by the ropes. Right, he had to realize Chisora is a popular fighter. What's Chisora been doing the entire fight? Landing counters. 
right? Didn't didn't it cross Joe's mind that he had just been knocked down in the ninth round? Why have a tenth round where he's pursuing the same strategy? So let me say this. I mean, I, I congratulate Derek. Let me say also, end of the fight, Derek is puffed up around the eyes and Derek is winded. Right, I'm sure some stamina guy like Usyk was watching that fight and was thinking, man, there is no way a guy who barely makes it to the finish line. Granted, it's a shootout, but Derek barely makes it to the finish line. In a 10-round fight, there's no way Derek would be able to look good against Usyk in a 12-round championship match in the later rounds. Right, I, I guarantee you, too, that if Usyk sees Derek goes over to the corner, then Usyk follows him over to the corner, then starts getting hit with shots. I guarantee you Usyk would understand, hey, this is not the place I want to be. Let me take a step back. Let me shoot my jab. Let me establish distance. Let me not crash the pocket. Let this guy come to me. Let me change the dynamic. Let me make this guy the lead and not the counter. Things like that apparently didn't cross Joe's mind. I thought he could have won this fight. I was expecting his jab to be a major part of the fight. I was not expecting him to decide, hey, let's have a shootout. And then when his opponent backs over to the ropes, I wasn't expecting Joe to say, you know what? Let me continue the shootout with him over by the side of the ring. Right? I'm hoping the people around Joe show him the Foreman tape, right, Foreman Ali, and say, Joe, do you see the mistakes George is making here, right? Ali's covered up and Foreman's in front of him still throwing punches. Here the only difference is, you know, Derek Chisora isn't covered up. Derek Chisora has his hands down and is, and is looking for counter opportunities, right? He's figured out that if he leans a little bit, Joe can't reach him. So he's leading, sees an opportunity, then he's throwing vicious hooks. One drops Joe in the ninth round. Joe then proceeds to lose the tenth round of a close fight. Folks, that's a three-point swing in the last two rounds. That's how Joe Joyce loses this fight. He should have been a little bit smarter. He should have shot a jab. He should have had the mindset in that ninth round of, hey, I've won the early part of this round. Let me lock that in. Unless this guy does something dramatic, I've won this round. There's no reason for me to now hunt him down over by the ropes and have a shootout with him. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I know I sound a little bit bitter. I lost on this fight. Let me hear how you did. Let me also point out, too, when I made a prediction on this fight, several people here on YouTube said, you're underselling Derek Chisora. There was a distinct Chisora crowd here, and understand, the odds were very favorable for Derek Chisora. In the comment section of this YouTube video, tell us the odds you got. Now's your time to crow. Tell us the odds you got, and tell us why you thought Chisora would do what he just did. Be honest. This is not the fight I was expecting. I was expecting more Joe Joyce jab. Right? Against a shorter Derek Chisora. Tell us the fight you were expecting where this fight matched up with your expectations and where it didn't. Right? Finally, let me say this too. And I said this after the Fraser Clark, Fabio Wardley fight. You know, I hope these two guys never fight again. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think Joyce... Could have won today. I think he could win a rematch. Right? But, you know, fights like this take so much out of a fighter. Especially guys this age. Right? That, okay, they gave us a classic. Right? This is the shootout at 02. They gave us this classic. Both guys had their moments. I believe fighters should only drain themselves like this. 
for championship fights. Right? I, you know, if, if either of these guys were fighting the winner of Usyk Fury or Dubois, AJ, okay, great. You know, that's, that's an exclamation point fight. Uh, you know, Joe Joyce, Derek Chisora, neither has been heavyweight champ. That's your moment to get that opportunity. I don't like to see two guys who don't have the title give this much of their careers to a fight that's a non-title fight. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I'll agree. This fight certainly enhances Derek Chisora's um, career. Um, no question about it. You know, Chisora, you know, even as an older guy, is still bringing heat. Great, right? Um, let's just say I hope his next fight is a title fight. I'd like to see him against Usyk. I take Usyk because of how tired Chisora looked at the end of this fight, right? But just to understand, I'd love to see Chisora against Usyk. I would be cheering if I heard Chisora retired. Right? Because let me just say, many of the fighters I grew up with, some of them, great fighters, are no longer in the public light. You understand the fighter took a lot of punishment and sooner or later your body pays you back a little bit. Right? But let's just say, great fight. I hope these guys never fight again. I hope Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark give up the idea of fighting each other. Maybe what the four guys need to do is to fight other guys, right? You know, Fabio Wardley can fight Derek Chisora. Um, Joe Joyce can fight Fraser Clark. Mix it up, right? You'd be hard-pressed to get the kind of heat you got from Clark Wardley and from Joyce Chisora, right? That kind of heat, to me doesn't warrant a rematch unless it's a title fight. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.